Hey guys, Harv here and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. Today we have a video that is based largely on the conversation I had in the comments section with someone. And that's that the game is getting too easy. Is it? Is it really? Or are we just getting better at it? Well, I think it's a little bit of both actually. Because the game is significantly easier now that we have these new parts, these wonderful new large tanks and things to use. Um, and I've, I've been thinking a lot about the functionality of the game and, you know, how ships are less ten... Uh, engines, they don't over... they don't blow up anymore. Why is... why is that with engines? I mean, we used to have it all of the time where if you had a booster or a stack of boosters together, they would blow up if they were firing, which made the game quite crazy and haphazardly and all these other words that don't actually make sense on their own in that context. But, um, anyway. I thought to myself, how can we go back a little and kind of touch that, uh, once more touch that challenge of what the Kerbal Space Program was. And a while ago, the massive addition that everyone was excited about to the game wasn't the moon or Minmus, it was Map View. Map View. Map View is what you get when you press M and you basically zoom out into, uh, uh, in an interplanetary godlike camera, you know, and you can see trajectories plotted and everything. I think we're not going to do that this time. I think we're going to do something, say, land on the moon and return without looking at the map view. It's a challenge, and it's one that I'm glad to accept. So, thank god those things didn't blow up. <laughs> We've launched our vehicle, Simple Moon Simple Moon Mission is actually the name of the vehicle, uh, just with four lifting engines and three tanks uh, each, and you know, eight boosters, and now we're using this current stage, this uh, two tank and one engine stage, and we've basically just gone up on a standard trajectory, and now we are going to... Well, the thing is, the hard part is circularizing the orbit. Circularizing the orbit is going to be the hardest part, certainly, because, um, well, it's, it's, you, you can never really know exactly how much thrust you need to change unless you have the maths perfect. Now, as it happens, we might actually get a bit lucky because the time of day, I believe, I think it's almost right almost perfect so perfect in fact that we should just see the moon rise we're at a hundred and twelve hundred and twelve point five kilometers and by my rough calculations we want to be going around three thousand and thirty meters per second uh, in order to send our trajectory to the moon and we were very lucky launching at this time of day so that we don't have to bother with all that circularizing nonsense that would be even more of a challenge. But yes, let's burn. Let's just burn for the heavens and hope. Now this video is post-commentary, as I've tried so desperately hard, <laughs> slash sarcasm slash, to uh, I've tried to kind of disguise that, I haven't drawn attention to it, but it is. And the reason for this is that this was recorded last night. Now, the reason this is around 17 minutes long, and I'm doing 17 minutes of talking when I could just edit it down, is because I want to make an attempt, at least, uh, to prove that I'm not using MapView to do any of this. And, you know, 17 minutes, it's a nice kind of a uh, meal size video. I would say bite size, but bite size is kind of more 5 minutes, I think. Um, and I've been posting a lot of 30 minute -er uh, videos for a while. But anyway, we've got our speed up to the correct velocity. We've got our speed up to the correct velocity. Isn't that just saying the same thing twice? Uh, we have got our ship up to the correct velocity, and we are hoping, we're hoping we're going to be on the correct course. It feels, I, I don't know, I feel like we're not, we didn't go fast enough, but sure enough, we are actually, we are actually coming in, and it looks like we might hit it directly. <laughs> if we don't do something about it. There's the sphere of influence change. And from our prograde position, it seems like we're actually travelling straight down. And that we don't really need to adjust at this point to uh, change that. But we're going to. 
because I can't afford to get into a parking orbit or anything. Just to make sure we are landing, we have to try and drop straight down. Which is a bit of another nostalgia trip for me, because this is exactly the method I used to employ uh, when I started playing the game <clears throat> seriously, taking it seriously. Luckily, another lucky thing, similar to how the moon was just in the correct position when we launched, uh, is that we're landing on the light side of the moon. Which is uh, pretty, pretty lucky, I have to say. I hate landing on the dark side. It, it really screws with my head because it's hard to tell how, uh, how far we are off the surface. I mean, we could use the, uh, the inside raid, radar. The, the radar altimeter, that's it. But uh, we don't. We don't in this case because it's nice to watch it from the outside. Maybe we could evolve this mission actually. Ah, there's a thought. Just stopping, cut out our engines now. Uh, maybe we could actually take this a little further. Well, hopefully, we don't know whether we will actually succeed or not. We might be, you know, we might not be cautious enough and actually just crash down straight onto the surface of the moon, but hopefully we will succeed with this mission. And if we do, I think it's possible that we could uh, do a whole mission from IVA perspective. Yeah. Yeah, I like the sound of that. I mean, landing in IVA, it might be harder to judge drift, but it certainly will help with altitude, because it actually has that radar altimeter, which tells you your correct altitude above the surface, rather than your altitude above sea level. But anyway, returning back to the video, so we detached that stage, and we're just burning at intervals. I'm trying to keep my speed below 500 meters per second, and so when I hit that, I uh, start burning and drop back down to about 200 meters per second, or 250, something like that. 250, yeah. Carry on warping down, and as soon as he gets to 500 again, then we'll burn once more. Isn't it kind of weird just to watch this sphere? <laughs> this very, very rough and barren sphere, but sphere nonetheless travel up towards us. It's hard to believe that, I mean it looks so small when we were up there, but sooner or later it becomes a whole planet, a whole new world for us to discover and explore. And before you ask, this is never going to work of interplanetary missions. Never. Absolutely not. No chance. There's no way in... Okay, we'll think about it. But it's going to be extremely hard if we do this. This, we should we should do more of these, actually. We should think. I always say we. I feel like it includes you in the video. You know, this is our channel. This is These are our videos. But uh, I think we... Hint, hint, comment section. We should think of more ways we can take the game back to uh, how the challenge it used to represent. Maybe I'm just too good at it. Maybe I mean, I'm sure there's a, new, a challenge for all the new players in the game. But, um... I mean, one thing we could do is use only the old parts. We could use only the old parts. That might actually work, because, um... What what would that be? Old parts, as in old, old parts. I don't mean pre-0.15. I mean, literally, we had fuel tank, um, no advanced SAS, uh, command module, parachute, decoupler, standard engine, and that's pretty much it. Isn't it? I think we did. We definitely didn't have landing legs or landing gear or any of this. None of this, these nonsensical three meter parts. No, we had the bare minimum, which we might try and do, accomplish great things with. You know, this is the game about accomplishments. As the rocks start appearing and we drop our speed down past eighteen meters per second, just slowly bringing us down. I might be a little out of sync, because I'm getting a bit of lag in my preview video for some reason that I'm talking over, but never mind. Bringing it down slowly. 17 meters per second, 17.6.5. If there's one thing that I enjoy doing in this game, it's landing. Because it's rather stressful. I think I, I do often forget how stressful it can be. Oh, oh, coming, coming in low. Yeah, just because I'm I'm so practiced at it. Six meters per second, five. There's our shadow, we can see it. It's hidden by the nav ball. 
No, 1, 1.7, 1 1.9, and so close. So close. Very, very just tilt slightly. Don't drift, don't drift, but don't hesitate either. Just plunk it down like that. We have landed. We've safely got to the moon without. And there's Kerbin. Kerbin smiling down on us by bearing its dark ass. Um, we've successfully got three men, three Kerbals, to the moon without using the map view. Feeling pretty successful right now. And who else will be the solitary person to get out? Yeah, land three men on the moon. Only one of them goes on EVA. <laughs> Jebediah Kerman, of course, the captain. The captain who gets shunted with the worst seats, with the, with, with the worst windows. Unfortunately for him. But uh, yeah, on the moon. Cinematic mode it looks pretty damn awesome. Man, e EVAs were such an incredible thing to add to the game. <laughs> they really... And, like, I don't think if you... Most people don't know, actually, is that the parts were actually 2... 1.5? No, two, time, two times smaller. Or is it three? Oh, I don't know. It was quite a big deal, basically. They sized up the parts in order to allow... <clears throat> allow the EVA and Kerbals to act as vessels. So... For someone who was so used, I'm getting used to it again now, but someone who's so used to seeing these small ships, comparing them to the size of a Kerbal, they seem massive now. And they are, in real life, they really are that massive. It's incredible. But anyway, let's have a 20 minute jog on the surface. This isn't a scientific uh, research mission, this is simply proving our capabilities. Just like a lot of the uh, Mercury missions were. But yeah, we can come out of cinematic mode, and let's go, I guess. Burning upwards, retracting those landing legs. Which way do we want to burn? 90 degrees, because 90 degrees points us towards the planet at the moment. And you may think, oh yeah, we burn towards the planet. Well, actually, no. We want to burn when the planet's above us. But it's pretty high in the sky, and you know, it, it works on the same principle. Basically, you're thrusting back along the trajectory, uh, the basically retrograde motion uh, when you're talking about the moon. Because the moon's orbiting Kerbin uh, at 90 degrees, it's going round. And if we burn at 90 on the light side, which is directly underneath Kerbin, uh, is it always? It's tightly locked. No, but the sun will move, so... Basically, if you're burning directly underneath Kerbin, you want to be burning 90 so that your direction is opposite along that retrograde of the moon's orbit. Whereas, if you're on the dark side, you want to burn the dark side of the moon. If you're on the dark side, you want to burn at 270 to burn retrograde. Just how it works. Anyway, what is escape velocity for the moon? I think it's about 650 meters per second or so. I'm not entirely sure. But let's put it up to 800 just to be just to be safe. You know, I haven't predicted or accounted any of this. Literally, I watched one of my old landing videos and tried to work out uh, some velocities from that. But hopefully... Okay, yeah. It's definitely got us out of the moon orbit. I know it'd do that much. Let's... We have to be safe. We can't afford to miss Kerbin, really. Well, we can, but... I don't really want to. I want this to be a short video. Actually, speaking of short videos, um, this is rather short. In fact, I posted another video. It was a challenge video a while ago. It was fastest real life time to the moon and back. And we've smashed that with this. That time was 16 minutes and 17 seconds. Something along that line. And that was with, like, what, uh, everything done on times two, with three times speed, no, a two times speed on constantly. So, if you take all those factors into account, we've definitely beaten my old record for fastest real-life time to the moon and back, which is pretty awesome. Anyway, just burnt retrograde, dropped our velocity down to 250 meters per second, whether that's mainly up or down or sideways, <laughs> it's not going to be up, surely. How far sideways that is, I didn't really account for, and we actually end up dropping 
directly down towards the planet, which is a bit freaking scary. <laughs> So yeah, let's uh, let's get rid of all excess weight and make sure we get our heat shield ad out. Seriously, this is not something that we want to. And like right now, I seriously thought we were going to crash. And I can't open the parachute at this velocity because it'll just tear off. But luckily, luckily indeed, there is plenty of atmosphere to slow us down, to slow us down, and cushion our descent, which we are grateful for. There's the radar altimeter that I was talking about showing us the correct altitude. We can open up the parachute and we can watch it from inside the window as that hits 500, there we go, opens at 500 meters above sea level. And of course we are on the sea, so that's it, that's the video. <laughs> what else can we do, what else can we do to try and recreate the challenge of the old Kerbal Space Program? Uh, one thing you can do in the meantime whilst we think of this is post the comments with suggestions and or uh, submit some ships to my test pilot Kerbal Space Program test pilot series where basically I take viewer submitted ships and I take them out for a spin and hopefully make some improvements to them. But that's in another video and this one has come to its end. So, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please do like the video. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.